My last video showed how to get started with the ARM Cortex M3 core inside the FPGA on a Tang Nano 4K board. I'll put a link below. This video shows the simplest way to let software on the M3 interact with designs you create on the FPGA using standard FPGA resources. I created two example modules. One just allows four registers to be read or written. The other is a simple pulse width modulation controller that allows the LED on the board to be blinked or dimmed. We'll be using what ARM calls the Advanced Peripheral Bus. Most people just say APB, perhaps because this bus is not advanced. It's quite simple. Software on the M3 does a load or a store. This creates a transaction, or transfer, that flows from the M3 through several bus bridges to your design. ARM uses the term requester for the thing that requests the transfer. Your design is called a completer because it responds to the request, thus completing it. Your completer will implement memory mapped registers that get read and or written. The registers can have side effects and thus do something when software accesses them. This is the document that defines the APB protocol. You can get this document from ARM's website. The Cortex M3 subsystem in Goen's design uses version 2 of the protocol. This document shows the differences among the versions. APB defines the signals that must be used. Some signals run from the requester to all completers. Others, named with an X, are replicated per completer. PCLX indicates which completer is being accessed. This is a replicated signal. PEnable is asserted one cycle after PCLX. PAdder is the offset of the address of the register in the completer. PWrite indicates that the transfer is a write, in which case PStrobe indicates which bytes of the register to update and PWData is the data to write. For reads, the completer drives PRDataX to provide data values back to the requester. When done, the completer asserts PReadyX. The ARM doc shows this state diagram for transfers, but you don't literally have to implement the state machine in your completer, but do note the state names, idle, setup, and access. The signals tell you what state you're in. The only wrinkle is that the requesters are allowed to keep a completer selected and do more transfers. Here's the timing diagram for a write. The completer is in the setup state during cycle T1, where pCell is true and pEnable is false. In this state, all signals from the requester are stable, so the completer can capture the value of PW data, storing it in the correct register. It sets pReady, so it will be valid in cycle T2, the access state. If the completer needs more time, it can delay setting pReady until a later cycle. This means that access state can last for more than one cycle. PStrobe tells which bytes to update. This diagram shows which PStrobe signal corresponds to which byte. Reads are very similar, but the completer sets PR data as well as PReady, so both are valid during the access state. That's APB in a nutshell. Let's take a quick look at the Verilog. Here's the Go in IDE. I'll open the project file, and then we'll take a look at the top level module. And we see for connections leaving the FPGA, we have a clock and a reset and then also the UART connections. I'll see my previous video for how the UART works and the external adapter that you need. And we also have a connection to the LED on the board. And if we scroll down, oh, we see that I'm using a PLL. I decided to set the system clock frequency to nine megahertz, uh, mainly to give the Goen analysis oscilloscope a chance to work, and, and it did, but I won't show that today. So anyway, we're running at nine megahertz. And here's the instantiation of the M3. And so you can see the UART signals and all of the APB signals, as well as the reset button. And you'll notice that some of the signals are per completer. So here's PR data one and there's PR data two. And if I scroll down, I'll see the instantiations of the completer modules that I created. This one is just the four registers that really does nothing. And you can see that it's just the, the APB signals. That's all there is going to that. And then the PWM controller is similar, and you can see it's completer two because it has twos in its signals, and it also has the LED as a, as a signal. So now let's take a look at one of those completers. We'll begin by taking a look at some registers, as it's the one that's a little bit more complete in some sense. So if I open it, you'll see the APB signals. And here I've allocated storage for four registers. And they're using signals 3 and 2 because these are addressed by word. They're 32 bits wide. And if we go down here, so you can see there's really not much to this. So in the always block, we have a reset that, can, that ensures P ready is 0. 
But then it just every clock, it checks to see if we're in the setup state by, by checking if pcell and not p enable is true. If, if that is true, then we're in the setup state. And then we just have to decide whether we're writing or reading. And if we're writing, our job is to set the value of the correct register. And that's chosen by the address. And also you have to gate the assignment by the strobes so that you're only setting the bytes that you're supposed to set. So that's how you write the registers. And then if it's a read, you simply set PR data to the correct register chosen by the word address. And then in the setup state, you want to set P ready to be one for the next state, which will be the access state. And then in all of the other states, you want to ensure that P ready is, is going to be zero. So that's really all there is to it. Now let's take a look at the other module real quickly. So that's the PWM controller. And if I scroll down, I did it a little bit differently. I allocated the all of the necessary registers just directly. So this counter is just counting at the system clock frequency and it counts from zero to the value of counter limit. And then the LED is on whenever the counter is less than on limit. So you can see PWM out is assigned to counter less than on limit. And so that makes it work like a PDM controller if you think about it a little bit. And here's the offsets of the registers. So in reset, I, I wanna make sure P ready is zero and that the counters are all zero. But other than that, down here, the counter just, this is where the counter counts up to counter limit. And, and then the, this block is analogous to what we saw in the previous one. So if P cell and not P enable were in the setup state, so if we're writing, we have to choose which register to write. And if we're reading, we choose which register to read, set P ready to one for the access state and make sure that P ready is zero in all other states. So that's how this one works. It's pretty similar. So I think you, you could be able to use this code as a template for a completer that you wanna to make to work with the Goen M3. I want to show you something about instantiating the M3. It's done with the IP core generator tool, like you saw in my previous video. And so you go to microprocessor systems, hard, MCU, and the Goen EMPU, that's the M3. So it makes this diagram. And for this version of the project, I had turned on UART zero, which I'll do that. I actually set the SRAM to be the smallest possible value, two kilobytes in order to give some memory for going analysis oscilloscope. But now to turn on the APB interface that we're using, you have to double click on this. And so you can select up to 12 APB2 masters, and I'm using only two of them. And you can see that it shows you the base address of each completer. So 2400 and 2500, and that the total address space for each completer is 256 bytes. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to change that to make it bigger or smaller. But anyway, that's what you have to do to instantiate the M3 with the APB masters to connect to your completer. So you say, okay, and I've already done all this, so I'm just gonna say cancel. But if you say, okay, again, it offers to add the module to your project. And now we can build in flash. So I'll do run all and it completes pretty quickly. We'll go to process and look at the place and route report. And you can see that we're not using too many resources yet, even though this is a pretty small FPGA. And let's see, we can look at the, the uh, timing report. And so it's all blue, so no timing problems. The, let's see, max frequencies. So the rest of the logic is showing as a max frequency of 103 megahertz, but the M3 core itself is limited to 80, so keep that in mind. And so now that we've built, we can flash this. So you do the flash programmer, and then sometimes you have to go down here, you have a right click, pick USB cable setting, and say save, otherwise it doesn't necessarily always find the device. But now for MCU flashing, we have to pick MCU mode. Let's see right here, and then we want to erase and program, we have to choose our software. So prog.bin and save and do that and it will flash. And maybe I can bring this terror term window to the front so that we can see that it does something when the flashing completes. So that's done. It printed this a second time. I had been running it previously so you can see previous text from previous runs. But that's how you flash and uh, and go. So now let's take a look at it running. 
So now the FPGA is loaded and running. I'm going to reach over and press the reset button. And you can see that it prints hello world and enter HE for a list of commands. So if I enter HE, it shows that we have some commands to read and write addresses. And you can also see that initially the LED on the board is blinking. Well, let's start by testing the four registers in the first completer. So the first thing I can do is read them all and see their default values. And you can see they're all zero. And then I can write them all by pasting these commands, just so you don't have to watch me type. And now if I read them again, um, you can see that they've been set to the correct values. I can also write a byte of one of them. So just changing that single byte to an EE. And now if I read that, we see 1122EE44. So it looks like everything's working. We can also play with the LED. And so initially, it, the software sets it to blink at a one hertz frequency. But I can change this to be a more like a PWM brightness control of the LED with a 2000 hertz PWM frequency. And so I'll set it like that and to be fully on. So now you see the LED is fully on. And so now I can also paste other values. So here's half lit. So it goes down a little bit. My camera's not great. And here's um, not lit very much at all. And here's off. And so this is all just by setting the uh, counter limit and the, the on limit that, that we saw in the Verilog. So then I can set it back to blinking at one hertz. So you can see everything's working. Lastly, let's take a quick look at building the software. So I'll bring up a terminal window. And this is the project that you can find on GitHub. I'll put a link below. And you see there's a directory called C code. C code. And if I go there, you can see the various C files. And all, all you have to do is type make. And it produces file prog.bin. And so I'm running this on Windows using Windows System for Linux. And see my previous video for more information about how the software works. I'll end this video here. See below for links to GitHub and other videos for background information. Thanks for watching.